2 Corinthians chapter uh, 6, uh, verse, I want to begin reading at verse 14. We're in this series entitled, Experiencing God. Amen? Amen. And it says, verse 14, Do not be bound together with unbelievers. For what partnership have righteousness with lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? Or what harmony has Christ with Belial? Or what has a believer in common with an unbeliever? Or what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of for we are the temple of the living God. Just as God says, I will dwell in them and walk, tell your neighbor, experiencing God, and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. I want to talk about this morning, Experiencing God, Part 3, Through Holiness. This word, holiness, I believe it's, it's been abused. I believe to some degree we're operating with an Old Testament mindset about holiness. A lot of people have misunderstood what holiness really is. When we speak of God's holiness, we're accustomed to associating it almost exclusively with purity and righteousness. Surely the idea of holiness contains these virtues of purity but that's not the primary meaning of holiness. The biblical word holy has two distinct meanings. Number one, the primary meaning of holiness is apartness. You hear what it says? It's what? Separation. In other words, if you're holy... The Bible says, be holy as I am holy. Now, how do you do that in a fallen world? How can you be holy when the flesh exactly. is still under the curse? Amen. We're saved, but we still have to deal with some mess. Amen. And I believe that a lot of us have a misunderstanding, not you, I'm just saying some of us. We have a misunderstanding of what holiness is so we stop trying to be holy. Oh, I wish I had somebody. Without the proper definition, how can you become what God wants you to become? And so holiness has to do with apartness, separation, otherness. When we say that God is holy, we call attention to his profound difference be the difference between him and his creatures. Amen. When we call God holy, we say that he is different than us. Are you with me? When the Bible speaks of a holy of object, or people of a holy time, it refers to things that has been set apart consecrated and different because it's been touched by God. The moment you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you were touched by God. You are now set apart from the world. 
As a matter of fact, the world can't do nothing with you anymore because you no longer belong to the world. Now, you may keep going back to the world, amen, and you may try, you know, to fit in again around people who you think that you can help save and all that kind of stuff. But can I tell you something? As a believer, you're called to separate yourself from the world. Are you with me? And if you're not careful, the world can cause you, amen, to go right back to where God had brought you from. That's called deception. Are you with me? Let me say this. Last week I told you the ground that Moses was standing on. Where the, bon where the burning bush was, it was holy ground. And here's the reason why it was holy ground. It's holy ground because God was present. I'm going to say it one more time. Because what? God was present. Well, last time I checked, the Bible says that you and I have the Holy Spirit. Not only are we, have we been touched by God, but we are now in God's presence. Do I have anybody? The reason you're still here right now listening to me is because you and I have something in, in common. And that is we know Jesus Christ in the pardon of our sins. So therefore, you don't have to try to be holy. You are holy. Tell your neighbor, I'm holy. Oh, I wish I had somebody. I, see, I wish, see, the misnomer of holiness has caused many people not, watch this, to become legalistic. Come on now. To become legalistic, to become judgmental. But God says as a believer, you are set apart for me. Can I tell you something? God wants to use you. God wants to do something with you that you probably can't even put your mind around. And, and watch this. But he needed to clean you up to get you out. He needed to take care of the issue of sin in our lives so that we can become vessels of honor. Can, can I tell you something? What, a, a person who's walking and living in holiness, you can sense the nearness of God. You are in tune with the word of God. Come on, somebody. And, and, and can I say this? Can I say this? Can I say this? Uh, with God, there are two d distinguishing factors about ho holiness and righteousness. There is internal righteousness of God. And there is external righteousness of God. So internally, we see his divine nature. Externally, we see it in his actions. Lord have mercy. So when somebody tells me that they're holy, but they're still at the club, Houston, we got a problem. Ain't nothing wrong with the club. That's what you say, right? I'm good. I'm good. Only one drink is going to get me. I ain't, I ain't going to go past one. But you have the Holy Spirit. But you're adding to the Spirit. Uh-oh, so, see, I, I'm losing my crowd now, see. Y'all were with me at first. <laughs> now, now, now I lost you. So, 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 so check this out. So internal righteousness, we have. How do we have that? By the nature we now have in Christ. Amen. Watch this. External righteousness has to do with our actions but not only our actions, you ready for this? But our associations. So who you hang with matters. Paul is writing to this Corinthian church. And when he writes to this church, this church was failing in holiness. This church at this point had fallen into false teaching. They had given themselves... And they were accommodating certain things in the life of the church. For instance, 
you had a young man who was sleeping with his daddy's wife in the church. They were saved, but they were carnal. They were living life, not according to the word, but according to their own rules. And so the question is, think about this for a minute. How many you want to experience God? Think about this for a minute, if this makes sense. How can I experience God, but I still want to live the old way? What do you call that? Religion is what you call that. Like, I come to church because, you know, it's right. It's the right thing to do. You see what I'm saying? But, but when I leave, I'm not living like I'm experiencing God Watch this, because I'm not walking with him, I'm not living with him. Why? I'm not experiencing him because I'm not setting myself apart. Some people call it conceited. Yeah, you got to be conceited spiritually. Yeah, you do. Because if you're not, the devil will pull you right back in. Or you think you better than everybody. You think, you know, because you're doing this, because you're going to church now, you think you better than, no, I'm not better than anybody. I'm trying to live this Christian life, but I'm in a relationship with someone who asked me to be exclusive. Yeah. I wish I had somebody. God doesn't want you to be with anybody else but him. And when he sets us apart, he gives us the capacity now. The difference between a believer and an unbeliever is that we have the capacity to choose two things, right or wrong. You could choose God or you can choose the world. Whereas before, we did not have the capacity to choose the other one. But when Jesus died on Calvary's cross... He gave us a chance, an opportunity to now choose the right thing. All right, all right. This Corinthian church, they were saved, but they were stuck. Tell your neighbor, saved, but stuck. Saved, but stuck. How you get saved and then get stuck? I'm just asking. Watch this. They, they were, watch, watch what they were doing. They were withdrawing from God. They were, they were stepping back from God. They had got on fire for God, and then all of a sudden, they stepped back from God. In other words, they were going to church, and they were looking at everybody around them. They were judging them, but they weren't looking at themselves. And oftentimes, we ha can't have that experience with God because for some reason, amen, we have lost our connection. Paul tells them, and I want to show you something. Paul says to them, if you look at chapter, chapter 6, I'm going to show you something. Chapter 6, look at verse 4. See, the enemy wants you and I to, to not use our hardships but become bitter because of our hardships. The Christian life can be very di difficult, especially if you're set apart. Do you remember when you made the decision to live right? What happened? Everything wrong showed up. All right, you remember that? Every temptation, every trial, every devil, every demon. Listen, you're like, wow, where did that come from? It's like every time you make up in your mind, I'm going to do the right thing, evil shows up like dag. So a lot of us give in. We say, why is this happening to me? Let me show you what Paul says. But in everything, commending ourselves as what? Servants of who? In much what? Endurance. In what? Affliction. In what? In what? Tell you them it ain't just you. Verse 5. Verse 5. In what? What? In what? In what else? Imprisonments. 
in tumults, in labors, in what? Sleeplessness, in hunger, in purity, in knowledge, in patience, in kindness, in the Holy Spirit, in genuine love, in the word of truth, in the power of God, by the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and the left. By the glory, dishonor, by evil report, by good report, regard as deceivers, and yet true, as unknown, as well as well known, as dying, yet behold, we live as punished, yet put to death. Verse 10, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor. Is this the Christian life? Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Is this what I signed up for? Tell your neighbor yes. Come on, man. Just as soon as you decide to live holy. Remember, it's not you being bougie. No, no, no. It's you being set apart. I'm not walking that street anymore. That's holiness. But from the time you decide, sorrowful yet what? See, it's an attitude. Watch this. As poor yet making many rich. As having nothing yet possessing what? All things. Paul says, my witness is important to my holiness. So while I'm going through, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to throw in the towel. I'm not going to cave in. Why? Because I want to experience God, but I want a testimony that when life gets tough, I got to hunker down. I got to keep living this life that God has set me apart to live. Do I have anybody? So how do we experience God through holiness? Let's go to verse 14 so we can get out of here. 14, look what it says. So after he says all that in the context, right? Watch what he says here, and then I want you to hold your hand right there. I want you to flip over to chapter 5, verse 20. But watch this. I want you to read this with me. Watch what he says. Do not, I'm going to just do the first part. So as a result of being holy, he says, do not be bound together with who? Flip, flip over, hold your hand, flip on, hold your hand right there and flip on back to 520. If it's on the screen, then flip your hand up. So I'm hitting you like this. He says, do not be bound together with who? Oh, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Let, let, me, let, me, help, let me help some of you. I thought we're not supposed to judge. You're supposed to judge. You're supposed to judge who's not good for you. And as a believer, unbelievers are not good for you. Now, if you're not going to save them, get them out, then you need to leave them alone. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. He says, do not be bound together with unbelievers. 520 says, therefore, we are what? Oh, my goodness. You know what an ambassador is? One who goes to another country. And represent their country. Well, I got good news for you. We are of a different country. Heaven. When you accepted Jesus Christ, you messed up right there, baby. If you really think you can go back, ain't no going back for you, boo-boo. Amen. You here now. So you might as well get comfortable with the ride. Watch this. I know you want to go back. I know your flesh is pulling you back, but you have the power to separate yourself from all that nonsense, especially unbelievers, because you are now a representative 
of heaven and the kingdom of God. So what you look like. Shaking that thing. Doing that thing. Dropping it like it's hot. Like a salt shaker. Black pepper and salt. Doing your thing. You know, you know how you do your thing. And you're blending in with the world. And you want God's holiness. No, you want, you want to experience God. Oh, I'm sorry. You just want to experience God on Sunday. Oh, that's what it is. You don't want to experience God every day of your life. So that's where the disconnect comes in. Watch this. He says, don't be bound together, watch this, with unbelievers because you are an ambassador of what? For Christ. I'm sorry, for Christ. So what's my first point? If you want to experience God, say ouch. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, watch the company you keep. And quit talking about you on a mission to bring back somebody from the dead. You're on a mission to bring your people back to the Lord. You, listen, you go in, you're going to be casualty. Matter of fact, they're going to hold you as a prisoner of war. <laughs> Just say, ouch. That's it. That's all. That's all. Watch the company you keep. How easy is that? But I believe, no, it ain't that easy. It ain't that easy for some of us. Because the benefits we get from hanging with some of those people. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Do you know that unbelievers are darkened in their understanding? Alienated from God? Excluded from the commonwealth of God? And in actuality, they can't even understand anything you're saying about the word of God? Anything? I'm saying Anything? So there you are, puffing and smoking with them and drinking and doing all that kind of stuff with them, and they still ain't changing. But do you remember when God saved you? Look at you now. So it tells me that God has the power to change. So if you keep talking to a person that you got in your house about Jesus, and they ain't responding, tell your neighbor it's time to move. You got to get them up, uh, out of your stuff. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Some of y'all don't like me now. Some of y'all don't like me now. But, but, but I understand. I understand you need your rent paid. I get it. I understand. I understand. I understand. I understand. I understand. I understand. Let me let, let, watch this. Listen, I understand. I understand. I, I know you need a sugar dad. I understand. All. I know you... I, I know what you need. It's convenient. It's convenient. It's convenient. I know you ain't got no car, but she got one. I get it. And she don't believe nothing about Jesus. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Yeah. Look what he said. Let, let, let me go on before y'all. Yeah, let me go on. He says, same verse, same verse. Now watch, I want you to watch something in the text, okay? He says, he gives a command. Watch the command. Do not be bound together with, un that word means unequally yoked, right? So, so yoking something up, right, is joining it together. So watch who you yoked up with and you'll find out the direction you're going to end up in life. And if, it's a, and if you're a believer with an unbeliever, you better forget it. Nothing is going to happen. Watch the text. Watch the text. For what? Now he makes a contrast. This is called a contrasting text. He contrasts two things together. Look what he says. He says, for what partnership have what? No, 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 no. Stop right there. What part? Now notice. First, he's talking about yoking up. 
Now he's talking about what? So give me the next point. Watch who you're in partnership with. Part, this partnership thing has to do with fellowship. Many of us may not recognize, but we spend time in a lawless world. Watch this. The longer you stay in partnership with unbelievers, it's hard to experience God. Listen. I don't know how we, we kind of get to this place where unbelievers, you get along better with unbelievers than you do believers. What the world? You got joint ventures with unbelievers. <laughs> For real, like part, like real partnership. And you're saying, man, oh yeah, they, they, you know, that's my boy, that's my partner. You know what I mean? Oh, Really? When was the last time you experienced God in that relationship? A lot of us are not experiencing God because we're trying to yoke up and partnership with the wrong people. The Bible calls us to be holy and holy means set apart. Look what he goes on to say. Look what he goes on to say. He says, or what? Now, now, here, now. Paul is asking these questions. He says, or what, what? Or what fellowship has what? Now, now, you know what that word fellowship means? No. Participation. Sharing. Contributing. He says, well, hold on a minute. He says, what fellowship? I thought it was that too. Has light with what? Darkness. So the next thing you got to do is watch who you are in fellowship with. Do I need to labor that long? Listen, we got all these people around us who ain't saved. They in our house. That's why I like doing the little fellowships with the men. I'm trying to get our men to understand, brothers, you can't go back hanging with them dudes you used to hang with. They're going to pull you out. I don't care how strong you think you are. I don't care how deep you think you in the word. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to, no, nah, man, no, nah, bro, bro. Right here. Let's play ping pong. And watch this. We ain't had one drink. But man, we were laughing. We were having a good time. I mean, we were just, but you can tell when a brother has disconnected from the fellowship. Watch this. I look at who people hang with and I can tell what they become because the Bible tells me this. Right? Watch this. Watch this. He says, look what he said. He says, oh, what fellowship has what? T say this to your neighbor. How is that even possible? Come on, man. How can you say you're on a missionary journey? <laughs> you know what I mean? But when you get together, you ain't talking about nothing but God. You playing dominoes, right? Right? Nobody talking about God. I mean, I'm just saying, how can we really think that we're making a difference in our lives, but in their lives, if nobody's changing and you're the one supposed to have the word. How does a believer become so ineffective that when your presence, listen, when I show up in places, people start running like roaches. They, they do. You know why they run like roaches? Because I'm light. And you're light. And you're a city set on the hill. And you're a lamp that can't be put under no desk. So when you walk in, they should put their cigarette up. Put the weed up. Put the bottle up. Put the pornography up. Come on now. Hide the website. Clear out your cookies. Y'all ain't trying to hear me. Y'all ain't trying to hear me. Seriously, close down the app. 
But when you walk in the room, if everybody's still doing what, what they're doing and they ain't no regard for you, boo, your light is dim. You may be a two-watt now. <laughs> Question is, how bright are you going to shine in heaven? In heaven, we're going to have different wattage, you know. I want to be a billion watt. But if I keep hanging with people, listen, how can you keep hanging with people that pull you down? To their level. Watch this. And you supposed to be light. Think about it. Think about that. Look at verse 15. I don't understand. Listen. If you have harmony. <laughs> with. If you and unbel- if you and an unbeliever can get along better than you and your brother in church, I'm gonna ask you a question: Are you really saved? Something be wrong with that. Watch this. Oh, what agreement! Oh, oh, and, and let me just say this: How can you allow that mess in your house? You know they ain't married, but they stay in the same house. Oh, did I say something? You let all kinds of stuff come through your television. Come on now. Come on now. We binge watching mess. You know what we binge watching? Depravity. But it's juicy to the juicy side of us. No, the flesh side of us. The unbelieving side of us. Look what he said. Or what harmony has Christ with Belial? Or what has a believer in what? I'm just asking. These are this is questions that Paul is asking to the Corinthian church who was supposed to be strong. They were supposed to be gifted. They were supposed to be spiritual. They were supposed to be holy and set apart. And he's asking, how is it that y'all got more in common with unbelievers than believers? So here's my next point. Watch. Watch. Where is that? Who you are compatible with. I'm a Mac and the world's a PC. We're not compatible. Okay? And and I ain't no Androids. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. You know what I mean? I'm a Mac. The world is a PC. There's no compatibility there. We can't collide together. We Listen, you can't take a file from an Android and put it on an Apple. You can't take an Apple and put it on, a, on an Android. You know what I'm saying? It won't work together. So my question is, are you trying to fit yourself into places where you don't belong? So find out. Listen, you're looking for compatibility. I know you're going to Match.com. I know what you're doing. And you're trying, and you're trying to, oh, I'm sorry, eHarmony. The Christian version. Yeah, uh-huh. I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. Amen. Then you go into the dark web and the other stuff, but I'll talk about that later. But watch this. Watch this now. And you're trying to find compatibility with people who ain't saved. Just because they put their Christian doesn't mean they're Christian. See, here's how you can tell a Christian. Are they walking on this side of the street? A partner's. See, a lot of times, when I first got saved, I thought holiness meant, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't do this, I can't do that. But I told you last week, we on the grace, boo. So guess what? The fact that I got grace, I can be forgiven. You with me? But here's the thing. As you practice righteousness now, to live on, that's right, First John 1 and 9, as you practice living on this side of the street, right? See, this side of the street at first is going to be uncomfortable. Because the Bible says, watch this, narrow is the way. See, but broad is the way that leads to hell and destruction. But watch this. The broad way looks like Vegas. That's the one we're attracted to. When you walk down, you're like, oh, it's beautiful. Woo. But that, that narrow way, beatings, suffering. What else, what else he say? <laughs> Sleepless nights. Troubled, hungry, what else? Hungry, you think about food. Hungry, 
<laughs> Hungry and all this. You know, and you're like, man, did I really sign up for this? But the more you suffer, the stronger you become. The more you suffer, the, the, the more you trust God and you're able to overcome and be an overcomer. Watch this. Watch this. He says, what harmony has Christ? Belial, Belial, that word Belial means the devil. That's what that word means. He says, what harmony has Christ with the devil? None. And he, watch this, he contrasts that relationship with our relationship. Watch this, put the text back up there. With our relationship with what? With who? Can I ask you a question? What do you have in common with Ray Ray? Who ain't saved? And Pookie them. Pookie them. Have you ever thought about it? What? Do I have in common? Who are you compatible with? And and people, this this goes back to what I say. We come to church, right? We don't stay back for fellowship. We run out the door. That's religion. You're supposed to come and rub shoulders with another sister, another brother. Talk to one another. Share with one another. So that you can become iron. Sharpens iron. Are you with me? Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Verse 16. Verse 16. I'm getting ready to close. Then he says, or notice he's contrasted. He says, or what agreement? This is my last point, actually. Or what agreement has the temple of who? With idols. For What was supposed to happen in the temple? Supposed to be holy. You can't go into a temple and it be defiled unless it's a temple of Satan. But your bodies now are the temple. That's why stewardship is very important. What you put in it physically, how you eat, what you put in it through the air gate, the air gate, the eye gate, and the mouth. When you cussing all the time with your boys and everybody, right? Amen. And you're defiling the temple. How are you going to walk on this side of the street, but you always cussing everybody out? You ever been in church with some mean people? Just mean folk. Just looking mean. They say, how you come to church mean? I'm just saying, how you come to church mad? You are the temple of who? No, the living God. Just as God said, I want to experience him, y'all. I want to experience. I got to pay attention to who I'm, I'm, I'm compatible with. I got to pay attention to who am I in partnership with. I got to pay attention to who I have things in common with. Because here's the bottom line. I realize something. Sometimes we're hanging with people because of what we can get from them. But if you trust God, he's going to pay your rent. You don't need to compromise. To get your rent paid. Ask me how I know. I know someone who owns everything. The Bible says he owns everything. He owns, The cattle and the hills belong to him. The earth is the Lord's. The fullness thereof. And they that dwell in this earth. So there's nothing. Absolutely nothing that God won't give you. But if you compromise your purity. If you compromise your way of living. God is looking at us and saying, you can have your best life now, but you got to live a certain kind of way. And it boils down to choices. Look what he says last. He says, I will dwell in them. And what? Walk. I wish I had somebody here this morning. I said, God says he will dwell in us and he'll walk. So if one side of the room is walking right and the other side of the room is walking a different direction, how can we experience him corporately if we all heading in our own direction? 
He says that I will dwell in them and walk where? Among them. And I will be what? Their God. And they shall be what? My people. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then do we really want a healing? We got to decide today. I never forget when I had to make a decision who I was going to hang with. I, I, that, that was a hard decision. But in all actuality, it was an easy decision because I wanted more of God than I wanted more of that world. And so the last thing we got to understand is this. last thing is you got to watch how you treat your temple. Now, you're doing all kinds of stuff to your temple. Amen. You used to work out. You used to eat right. I'm just saying. God says, I will dwell in you. Can, can I say this? Can I say this? You are already experiencing him, y'all. The mere fact that you're listening to his word and you have his spirit, he says he wants to. But you know what God wants to do in this church? He wants to be right here, right now. And I believe he is. And this ain't something I'm saying. This is something I know. But watch this. You got to make a choice today. Which side of the street you're going to walk on? How long are you going to play church? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. How long, how long are you going to keep saying, oh, yeah, I like that church. In a hospital, <coughs> cleanliness is very important. In fact, the closer you get to the operating room, the more it's important. Doctors in an in operating room are very concerned that the scalpel not only is it only is not muddy, but that it's not even dusty. Because the smallest amount of impurity contaminates the procedure. Great effort is made into sterilizing the equipment. So that the impurity is removed so that no infections set in. If human doctors go through great de detail in the operating room to make sure that the environment is totally free from contamination, then that ought not to be a shock to us that God himself must function in an atmosphere of perfection. If human doctors recognize that you can't do surgery with a contaminated devices, then it ought to make sense to us, come on somebody, uh, that God, watch this, can't do surgery in our lives, watch this, that he wants to do if you don't sterilize your life first. How can he work on you when you won't sterilize yourself, purifying your mind, purifying your heart, and saying, God, I know I'm not perfect, but you told me one thing today, choose sides. I want to be set apart. And I want to live for him. Some of us are scared that this is just a repeat of your last religious experience you had. But I want to tell you something. You done stumbled on truth. And if you live the word, you will live a set apart life.